DC Fight fans. The following contest is being brought to you by Best Western Plus Waterfront Hotel and Maverick Performance Clothing. It's a catchweight contest at 160 pounds. Introducing your fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, trim in white and red. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, he weighed in at 159 pounds. He's a freestyle mixed martial artist representing Triumph MMA. He comes to the BTC cage with a record of two wins and four losses, with both of those bids coming by way of submission. Fighting out of it, representing Grand Rapids, Michigan, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Dominican Reaper, Eric Laura. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trucks trimmed in gray. Standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, he weighed in at 159 pounds. He's a freestyle mixed martial artist representing Bazooka Joe MMA and Team Parabella. He comes to the BTC cage undefeated with a record of one win and no losses, with that one big win coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Toronto, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, here is Matt Special! Referee, with fight uh, so Bazooka Joe would be here cornering him, but he's in Paris right now doing exactly what we're doing. He's sitting cage side doing his job. So we've got Rory McDonald in his corner. Of course, Rory is a brilliant coach. Ladies and gentlemen, this BTC catchweight contest will be decided in three rounds or less. Matt Special in the red wrist wraps. Laura in the blue. And we are underway. BTC5. Typhoon. John Ramdeen, Robin Black, Josh Hill. I wonder if Laura knew that Matt would come out right hand forward or not. There is footage on him, so. Laura looks calm right from the get go. He's That's smart. Right. Yeah, smart. Moving away from. Moving. Yeah. Above. Shot to the cup. Special recognizing his error. Well, you heard it. <laughs> the one problem we're never going to go away from in MMA. Yeah, no, it sounded like, uh, you know, hitting a home run. Like, it was <laughs> loud. But he's going to be all right. You can see. I was working on uh, some Bellator fights down uh, a month back, and Matt Mitrione hit his, his guy, and uh, there was a ruptured... Um, yeah, there was a ruptured uh, testicle, and uh, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It was 10 seconds into the fight, so we don't have that here. I'm surprised you, you yeah. couldn't just walk that off. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't walk that off. <laughs> so you don't want to throw a third one of those against Matt now. You know, you've just shown it twice. It's third time in that. You touched him. So Another spinning yeah. techniques. Are they sending a message to Special? Just a uh, nice head kick by Special. Just uh, kind of keeps you off balance and weird, you know, awkward strikes coming in. Matt's just gathering information here, really. You know, even these shots, he's throwing them, but he's throwing them to see the movements. See the reactions. Yeah. He's light on his feet for a, for a very physical guy. Very light on his right feet. Got through for Laura. You notice Laura's two wins are both by submission. Again, like we saw earlier, that's a nice choice. That right hand outside, the, yeah, the wide, wide hook. Laura's shown him a lot of kick feints. You're starting to see so many of these flashy things. Yeah. Oh, that's a rub. Yeah. Left hand. Yeah. Left hook landed. He just was in there just a little too long. Good job, especially all getting tight. And it wouldn't be too long if he was the one who landed the punch. It would be just right. But, exactly. but in this case, and Hard then move, taking him down here, yep. gathering yourself, yeah. get a little breath in there. Yep. So. so he did, he worked from this standing hip in position in his last fight against Chris Allard. He looked good here. He was landing big shots. You want your chest up a little higher because that, le that left foot can s sneak out and kick you in the head from there. 
Right now, this is nice. Truly dominant position. He's playing around for an armbar here. Which the the choice you see guys m often not go with that's there is just up kicks. There's there are up kicks there all day long. All day long, they create space too, give you enough space to get back to your feet. If somebody's trying to kick you in the face, you often back up. You're backing up. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. aware of it, especially if you get tagged with one. Yeah. And they also force you to keep your chest up and your hips in, and it's harder to punch from that position. Exactly. Then why aren't people using it more often? I don't know. I think there, there's still this feeling that maybe you'll get passed on it. But you train it. You train it like you train anything else. You train it to not get passed. If the, if the challenge of using a weapon is it can be countered, you just fix the counter. You don't stop using the weapon, right? Yeah, it's there. There's something there. Like, now... Now, yeah, I was just going to say, now you've recovered from that left hook. You don't need to stay there all day. It's great you're getting some shots off, but you don't need to. But because he didn't back out, Laura's now in the position with the high left underhook to try to fight him to the mat. But you guys, Parabellum trains this oh. position every every session. You wall work almost every day, so yeah. it's, it's sport in itself, really. It is. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, vertical jiu-jitsu. Yep, yeah, it is. It's just a vertical playing surface, yeah. But he, looking at his corner for instructions. This is where head position is key right here. Trying to get the head underneath that chin. So you often see guys take the two underhooks and they feel like they have that position, but Matt just squashed down on both elbows really powerful. That hurts. It really fries the shoulders. Absolutely, and there's throws there too when you have those both underhooks clasped. Are you surprised that in this position, especially I wasn't trying to disengage? Yeah, and sometimes you just, because you train that so much, you're just so comfortable there that sometimes you don't make the choice to, to, to separate. Special just I, staying out of the way. I just had a feeling about this one. That's a really great choice. Nice. I like to see Special use that left kick of the body more. Yeah, it's that been there. Although he's got his elbow tucked all right now. Earlier the elbow was flaring out, the right elbow was flaring out, which gives you that little channel in there. Laura with the mouth open. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yep. You nice feel strength. that. Those body shots, sometimes it, it, guys will be pretty good at not showing it, but they you feel them all. And they add up. So yeah. Right? Second round, yeah. third round, they start yeah. wearing you down. Yeah, and you, do, you feel tired or sore or fatigued. Your body's not quite working. You don't know what it is, but it's all of it. It's all the things you went through in that round. A lot of hard work by both guys in round number one. Nice clinch. Good round. Great round. Eric Laura, I like him. Yeah, you know, we weren't able to see a lot on him, but this is a good young fighter. And now both men going Green back body. to their corner. A little bit of blood around the... I am not special. Sometimes you see these guys and they've got three or four losses. It's because the only, you know, from a, a smaller area in Michigan, the only fight you're getting is against the local tough guy, the really talented local guy. So you, you, we see these guys a lot of traveling around calling fights. These guys, they maybe got three or four losses, but they're really tough outs every time. And that's the thing, you know, you, you can't just look on paper. You actually have to see how these fights play out. These are actually the fights that are hardest to take because on paper they don't look that great, yeah. but they're actually very talented. Right. Yeah, yeah. and then later somebody looks and goes, oh, you beat a, a guy who only had two wins. It's like, yeah, but he was incredibly good, tough, athletic this martial artist. Round two. Uh, you know, we never know what the, what the coaches could have said or what adjustments they made, but you do know that when that ice touches you, it feels so good, eh? Like that air, that cold air comes in your lungs, you hear a familiar voice, it's, it's all so it's good. It's heaven, it's heaven. Yeah. That one minute, it's yeah. heaven. It's so good. It seems like it goes for 10 seconds. Though. Yeah. A little bit of blood on Special shorts. Oh. Nice inside leg. Yeah. Kick. Yeah, I wonder if, oh, yeah. I hate that one. This guy is dangerous, man. He's had the two best shots of the fight. The left hook and, and that head kick. Good level change. So a triangle can happen here, for sure, but no. He's got to keep good posture. Yeah, and Rory's giving simple instructions, both hands in or both hands out. Because if one's in and one's out, that's where the triangle begins. I guess that's one of the advantages of when people hear that you're from Bazooka Joe's, they just assume that you fight one mm -hmm. way. It's a nice thing to have people, you know, make make assumptions about you. That's great. You know, I remember when I first started, I came from Iron Tiger Muay Thai. Yeah. Everybody thought I was just a Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. So it's good to have. 
I used to always really, even early when you were fighting early, really like the way, Josh, that you would work in guard, where you would drive off the ball of one foot, and one foot is up and one foot is down, and then as he'd adjust, you go to the other side, and it just felt very nat like a very natural, comfortable place to be. It's a good way to keep control, keep your opponent. You can feel them underneath your hips moving, so you can kind of follow with them, and you can posture up like he's doing that and rain some down some damage. And uh, I had the experience in one fight of, I won a fight, seven minutes of fighting where I was essentially in his guard. And, and you know, I passed a half sometimes, but it's a really comfortable spot. Like, you feel really safe it there. Is. Like, he's down, you can hit him, he's not hitting you a great deal. And you start to, your confidence goes up because you're in control. Essentially, the essence is on him to get out of there and start right. making moves, right? And trust me, I didn't have a lot of moments that I felt good, <laughs> <laughs> you know. He's going to look to angle up. I think he was angling for the armbar there, but... Right now, Matt Special racking up the points. A good place. How important is it that you just settle in and that you don't rush things? He's gonna I know try everybody wants to get, to get the knockout or the submission victory, but the win is the most important. And the experience and the time inside of the cage. How important is it that young fighters embrace these, these positions and these moments? I think it's very important. It, you know, obviously everybody wants to win, like you said, they want the knockout, but he's gaining time. Every minute that goes yeah. past is getting ring time. You know, he's 1-0 as a professional, so the more time he gets in there, the better. If he goes out and knocks him out in 30 seconds, it's great, but he's not getting that experience. And he is now, he's now in the longest fight he's a professional mixed right, martial arts right. fight he's ever been in. Uh, so Triangle is really climbing here. He's going to drive his hips in to try to, to get out. And he passes. That's the risk. But it's a tricky one because for a long period, you know, sort of 2009 to 2015, 16 kind of thing, the belief was don't even really attack submissions off your back. Get back to your feet. But that's that philosophy is changing. The, because the less people do it, the more rare the choice is. And the more rare the choice is, often the more effective the choice is. I also think the judging has gotten better yeah. too. Like when judges would see got someone in their back, and even if they're throwing up submission attempts and doing elbows from the bottom, they thought he was losing the fight. Right. But we're seeing way more uh, decisions go the other way now. An excellent job by Laura. So, did Matt have a, a background in wrestling before coming over to Parabellum? Do you know? I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. He's a hell of an athlete. I know he that. is. Yeah. But I really like this Laura too. They, they, Rob's done a great job putting really, these fights yeah, together. He really has, and and this is a this is a well matched fight that uh, on paper is hard to know how it's going to come together. Okay, Knees here. Yeah. Oh. oh man, you get knee there. That's a rough one. Then you also Laura's been beat up. And he's got to be fatigued, and he didn't take this, you know, it was a shorter notice, weeks, a series of weeks for him. So you see his grit and, and heart yeah, and yeah. determination to win this fight. And that's something you just can't know when you book a guy that, you know. Yeah, you don't know what kind of shape he's going to yeah. be in. And, and how committed to the fight he is. You know, and that sounds like, you know, that sounds like... Of course they're committed during a fight, but there's there's varying degrees of being committed. If you were in a war uh, and there's life and death, you are, of course, committed to the ultimate fighting to no matter what. Uh, and then if, you know, you can tap out to the first punch you got hit. And most humans are somewhere in that in that paradigm in between, that space in between. We've, we've been told many times it's about the journey. And when these athletes look back at some of these fights, like when, Josh, when you look at some of your previous performances where you get things done quickly as opposed to fights where you've been in there a long time do you look back and say oh i learned more as a martial artist being in those wars of attrition absolutely because uh you know like i said i've had fights that have ended in the first round in you know a minute or so and i've had 25 minute wars um, and in those 25 minute wars there's always that thing in the back of your mind that says okay you've done good just tap out now quit now look yeah. for a way out and it's on you to battle within your mind to say, no, I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And that's kind of where you learn the most about yourself. It's, it's a fascinating time, too, that we're in because that very sentence that you just said is absolutely true. All human beings have the ability just by being done, by being over covering up to be out. Chael Sonnen's talked about it a lot recently, and it's an experience he has. Only five years ago, that would have been an unheard of conversation to have from a professional fighter. But now that you can actually discuss it as reality, I think we, the audience, learn more about it and the fighters can become better because it's, they know that everybody has that experience. Everybody's in there. When they, those, those, 
goofy s sentences that people say like, oh, it's the toughest opponent is yourself. That's, uh, that's absolutely positively true. Yep. You have the ability to get out of this fight. And it's scary and it's hard and you're in pain and it, your, your heart is racing and you have that ability to get out. All right, gents, on your official, unofficial scorecards, how do, you, how do you see this after two rounds? I think because Matt was on top a fair bit, uh, that, that the, the judges will see both rounds for him, but very, the two best shots were landed by Eric. What do you think? I agree with you. I think Matty's got up two rounds to nine. It is a very close fight. Yeah, like you said, the big shots have been landed by Eric, but yeah. I think it's Eric has a sense of urgency here. Yeah. Nice duck. Nice drive in the double. Great job by Eric, too, there. You know, like, you have to make the decision that you're not going down. Now he's going to... He's, he almost changed his decision to let's I'm go for his him. neck. Yeah, yeah. We saw Tyron Woodley do that last week, completely, or a couple of weeks ago, completely bizarre choices from him in those moments. Those chokes aren't there. It's a way to surrender the position. It's a straight, again, it's a, it, that's the psychological aspects of being in there. And like my, my like Rory, my Jesus coach always says, don't jump for that guillotine unless you are 100% yeah. you have that because you're gonna end up, you're gonna compromise position and end up on your back. But aren't you, sometimes in situations where okay I'm going down anyways might as well try to secure this but when you said when you make the decision to admit that you're going down anyways you just made that true right. if you if you made the decision I'm not going down you can make that true you know you have a lot of control over and but it starts with your choices I think also some guys are smart enough they know they're going down they got beat they got burned but now they're reacting to the next step right when you hit the mat yeah. you're like turning the hips right. and you get back right. up as opposed to so you decide to fight it, and you know you don't have the energy. Yeah, once upon a time, they, people would describe this, and we commentators and fans, and we would all say, These, this is a takedown attempt. Okay, he failed on the takedown attempt. But it isn't a one thing. It's, it's, it's a combination, it's a chain of many, many small battles, all of which are important. And sometimes, yeah, you will surrender a, a position in the battle and end up on the ground to fight from there in an advantageous position to right. get back up. It's Absolutely. all a series of battles. It's not one thing, and, and we still do discuss this oddly, not everybody, but a lot of us discuss this as, you know, how many takedowns did he attempt and how many did he succeed, but it isn't always that at all. So there are many reasons to do this. You can strike from here, you can fatigue a guy from here, you can change the way he sees the fight. It isn't all about trying to get him down. That's like uh, Kane, exa uh, Kane Velasquez is a good example yep. of that. You know, he'll shoot, 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 fail on eight of the nine of them, but the ninth one he'll make you pay mm -hmm. and he'll just wear on you, wear on you, wear on you. And on the other eight, he puts you in a position yeah. where you can't hurt him and he's t making exactly. you tired. But it's one of the philosophies, uh, riding, riding, the great riding. martial arts philosophies, when you look at wrestling is just keep wrestling. Yeah. Go, 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 go until you get the takedown. And that is kind of why that connects to what we were saying about the guard and attacking attacking submissions from the guard. Because to choose to do that is to choose to stop wrestling in the traditional old sense. To wrestle is to get back to a dominant position. To attack from guard is to say, I'm here, I believe this is a dominant position, and I'm going to try to submit you. So much of your philosophical choices dictate how you fight and what happens when you fight. I just got to look to step around his left leg around yep. Eric's right leg and look to pull him off the cage. That head low. So Eric's choice is here, take the head all the way up or put it all the way down. And he's, if, if your head, if, if you're, the guy trying to take you down's head is lower than his hips, it's going to be very hard for you to take a guy down. If you think of a deadlift yeah. or, or a, squat a squat position, the chest is high, the hips are low, right. the head is high, that's the best position to try to take a guy down. The but try to, position. Yeah, try to do a squat with, uh, try to squat with your head down and the weight on your on your neck. It's very hard. This is a gr gritty fight. You guys were just talking about like the experience you get from this fight. This this is a kind of Josh. By the time you had ten or twelve wins, you had had eight fights like this. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's it's yeah. like that gritty battle where you know you're working your guy, working your guy. You can feel him chipping away. You can feel his body and his muscles start to fatigue. And it's just something, if you can keep going, why not just keep doing yeah, it? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a, it is a fascinating one, too. You start to hear his breathing change. Yeah. You start to f feel that he's giving up on things because he doesn't have it in him physically. And it, it's a, it's, I haven't had it. Jo you, Josh, you've had that experience dozens of times now. But it's, again, it's you feel so much better. Your, can it be your morale burst? goes up. Can it be a physical burst of energy that you can hear them fatiguing and wheezing? 100%. It's like playing a video game. You've seen your opponent's health diminishing, diminishing, diminishing. You can kind of feel that once you're in there. Yeah.
and, and your morale, your personal morale goes up and up, and his goes down and down, and they affect each other. I like this Laura though. He's just not giving it up. And he really, he threw a hard knee oh. and elbow. Oh. Trying to end with an exclamation mark. There we go, Maddie. Clinch, clinch. Maddie's now diving in to take the space away. Awesome fight. Some knees to the body by Laura at the end of the round. Exhaustive 15 minutes. Laura looks all right. Looks like he can go a couple more rounds. <laughs> Little mouse under the right eye of Matt Special. Great experience for both these guys. Yes, it's Special with that double kick. You can block the one kick and throw the second one. You can use it as either to crowd or, and here's, this was the key to it. If he did win two of these three rounds or all three, it was these positions that did it. Being able, really working hard to get that down and then to be in a dominant spot and throw shots. That's one position we just seen there uh, that I don't really like. When you go for the Muay Thai clinch when your back's on the cage, when you know your opponent's trying to take you down. Mm -hmm. Then it leaves your hips pressed against the cage, nowhere to go. So these are earlier, you can tell, because Matt doesn't have a cut under his eye in these highlights. That's round two now. That was, I mean, Nice and Laura landed the le hard le left uh, hook, a hard right head kick, and he uh, he catches it with something late here. Let's see what it is. He was a hook. Right? No. Ah, oh, that was the very end. Oh, they're showing us from 440. Let's take a look. Oh, he just missed it. Yeah. I think. Oh, here's the takedown. Yeah, right. And so he he works hard all the way across, and that was that guillotine spot we were talking about. These are the last few seconds. I, I think it was actually an elbow now that I remember. He threw a knee in tight and then an elbow. Great fight. These guys are, yeah. must appreciate each other, that's for sure. Send it up to Mr. Throwdown to make it official. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big round of applause for both of the fighters in this cage. After three rounds of professional mixed martial arts, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Mutter scores the contest 30 to 27. Judge Woods scores the contest 29 to 28. And Judge Costello scores the contest 29 to 28, all for your winner by unanimous decision. Matt Special! Matt Special. Thank you both for that fight. Matt? There's two fights now, two fights at BTC, two wins. The, the first one, you got him out of there in a few minutes. This one was a gritty 15. Which one do you prefer? Obviously, I prefer the, uh, the first fight, but you know what? I want to go right ahead of this one. I want to show that I got more than striking. There's more wrestling base behind me. The experience of those hard 15 minutes, this was a tough fighter. Came to fight, didn't back up an inch. That experience made you a better fighter, no question about it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you can go in the first round and knock the glove, but it shows when you really got the fighting spirit to all three rounds, grind it out, especially if you're more disciplined and you're not completely going to win, which is grappling and doing more and more to get through the hole. Congratulations, man. Be proud of that fight. And you too, sir. That was a wonderful fight. Thank you, guys. Yeah, well, one more. Guys, I got two shirts, Beer Brigade shirts. I'm going to throw them out. Who wants them? Who wants them? Thank my team, thanks guys. Suka, Kickboxing, Nirvana, MMA. These guys right here, my coaches. Yeah, we just make them better every day. Thanks guys, you mean the world to me. Your winner, Matt Special. Matt Special, I know is uh, one athlete that BTC believes will be a star for the organization. And All right, I'm here with Eric Laura, who wants to say a few words to everyone in attendance, ladies and gentlemen. Eric, how you doing today, man? Didn't come out your way. 
But I know you got a few words you want to say to everybody, so go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm really thankful for uh, BTC, BTC Promotions for uh, giving me the opportunity to fight here. I've been looking for a fight for a while. Last year I broke my TV board with wow. a uh, leg kick. Wow. It was really tough. Um, I thought he was going to come out kicking my, back, my rear leg, but they, they, they had a new game plan and rest for me. Um, I want to give a uh, best thanks to my people back at the New Republic. I know a lot of them are uh, watching this fight right now. I'm sorry I didn't come out my way. I, uh, I did get my own. It was a hard fight. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to be back here uh, soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Eric. I like that kid. Yeah. I like them both. All right, before we go to our next contest, we're going to do some giveaways from Directional Force.